Um, it's a tutorial form, uh, so we're gonna like you know hands-on develop a <coughs> cross plane provider, which is like you know a set of Kubernetes controllers with their own CRDs. So uh, before starting, how many uh, like hands up if you have been using cross plane with like you know other providers right now? Nice. Uh, so, how many of you just heard crossplane but not using it yet, or just like you know at the consideration phase? Nice. And how many of you started actually developing provider and like you know got stuck somewhere? So you're looking like how to develop that? Yeah, cool. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, writing crossplane providers. So crossplane providers allow you to bring any external resource, external API, into your cluster. As, as CRDs. So this is not like, you know, really like a unknown or like a very novel thing, but like, you know, with the tools and runtime and code generation <coughs> tooling we built, we have now a framework optimized for interacting with CRUD external resource APIs. For, for example, like, you know, the, the main thing with the Kubernetes control is like apply logic, like, hey, update if it already exists and like, you know, Create only if it doesn't, etc. So like you know, all these are like you know handled uh, towards like you know optimi optimized for assuming that the external API is like you know uh, in designed in CRUD method, not like in a declarative uh, fashion. So essentially, what we do here, like you know, uh, have a framework of, that contains like you know runtime and uh, code generation tooling that will allow you to take an imperative API and expose it as declarative API and use cross-plane primitives, abstractions, and compositions on top of it. Um, so yeah, uh, a little bit up about us. So I'm Wafak, uh, I work at AppBound, and I'm a cro I've been a cross-plane maintainer since V0.3, which is around like three years now. Uh, and I had worked at SAP before that, again, developing Kubernetes controllers in Hassan. Uh, yeah, I'm Hassan, uh, and uh, just like Mofak, I'm working at Upbound, and I am the newest uh, maintainer of Crossplane. Uh, with Crossplane 1.7 release, uh, we shipped the external secret store feature, and after that, uh, I am honored to be a uh, Crossplane maintainer. Yeah, uh, and there are lots of like you know provider maintainers, which are like you know on the orders of ten. So. Uh, feel free to like after this tutorial. Feel free to go ahead and contribute and like you know become a maintainer. Cool. So we can we can start. So what is a crossplane provider? As I just mentioned, just like you create pods and deployment resources, crossplane providers brings the ability to your cluster to create external resources like buckets. For example, this is from provider AWS, S3 AWS crossplane IO, and you can create a bucket with like you know a lot of uh, like all the configurations that are available via AWS CLI or the API. So this is like you know in its essence that's what like you know what it adds to your cluster. And then so technically though like you know what makes up a cross plane provider is first custom resource definition for this type which is like a schema and one thing that is different like you know than the generic Kubernetes controllers is that we have this concept of XRM, cross plane resource model, which we will go into details in a minute. And then uh, implementation of the Kubernetes controller, reconciling that CRD. And then provider config type, which is also a little bit like a cross plane specific term that tells, like, you know, for every resource, you need to tell how it will authenticate to the target API. For AWS, for example, this points to a secret with a like AWS access key and stuff. So per resource, you have to like you know say okay, this is the provider config that you should use for this resource, and the package met metadata. These contr these uh, providers are packaged as OCI OCI images, and you can use Crossplane Package Manager to install them. Um, yeah, Crossplane resource model. So this is uh, I think the crux of like you know. Crossplane providers and like, why would you develop a crossplane provider as opposed to like, you know, a standard Kubernetes controller? Uh, this resource model is based on Kubernetes resource model (KRM), which, like, you know, you can take a look at after the session, uh, which is like, you know, a ball of 
text with like you know, API conventions, uh, references, optionality, immutability, and everything. So on top of that, as a superset of that KRM model, we have many conventions that make up cross plane resource model. For example, the first and most important one is high fidelity. So on the right, you see DB instance, which is like you know RDS from AWS. High fidelity says that you should be able to do everything with that CRD that API allows. So like you know, there are like only a couple of fields right now to, to make it like you know fit there, but there are close to hundred fields of RDS instance. So like you know, at, because this is like you know the lowest level primitive in your cluster that we will build on top of, it has to expose everything. Like it's not an abstraction, but more like representation of the external resource. So it has to show all knobs and toggles. And in the status, it should show like you know everything that you can't configure, like you know health of the DB instance, for example, or the URL generated by the by the cloud provider. And then there are like you know other. Uh, Features like for provider, at provider. So when you when, when you are targeting like any external resource, that are, uh, it's really hard to come up with like you know common denominators, right? Like some uh, some APIs are like uh, they have different names and different structs and everything. So what this one says like you know it, the spec specification should go under for provider struct. So. Other than that, like you know, deletion policy and like you know, highest level things are cross pin specific. So at every cross pin provider, you can expect to see deletion policy. You can expect to see provider config graph, for example. But inside for provider, that is resource specific. And then under status, you have at provider. So status that at provider would be like you know what that specific provider returns from the API. And similar to deletion policy, for example, you can find a ready condition. Which is also like you know sig uh, signaled by the cloud provider. So you can, for example, have a standard there, like you know, hey, if a resource reports ready, then it's definitely like ready to be used, and that is across all cl cloud providers and all APIs. And I I don't want to go to like the, in the detail of all of them because like you know I know everyone is ready to uh, start coding, but like you know just at the high level, external name and tagging, we have the standard identification for all APIs. So like you know, you don't have to find VPC ID, RDS ID, and everything. It's always external name, and we handle the binding to like you know actual identification in the code, and no sensitive information. As you can see here, there cannot be a master user password field on the CR. So uh, you have to like you know, reference a secret, and then controller will take the password from there. And references, I think this is like you know one of the best features of crosspin providers, and we'll go into detail how we handle that. It is about like you know referencing other resources only with their custom resource name. For example, VPC ID, right? If you create a VPC, its ID is assigned later. So if you you can you are able to give its name metadata that name CR name in a folder like you know with bunch of infrastructure, and when you kubectl apply it, it will wait for VPC ID to appear and then use it. So it will become eventually consistent. You don't have to like you know create VPC. Take the ID and copy it to other resource so that it can start creating. And then connection secret is also like you know a standard write connection secret to ref. So when I create this RDS DB instance, it publishes once it's ready, it publishes a connection secret that you can mount to your pods, which we will do as part of the demo to connect Planet Scale database to WordPress uh, via connection secret. And then deletion policy is like you know if you if, if you don't want DB instance to be ever deleted, you can keep it orphan. And even though you delete this resource, it's gonna be like you know still in AWS. Um, and yeah, and others uh, readiness conditions, CRD cate categories, which uh, we can take a look later. And there is this link to for the whole XRM spec. Yeah, so. Um, so all these external features, as I said in the beginning, we have a framework that composed of like you know a runtime, code generation, and some scaffolding. So that it's like you know you already have to re write only the cloud provider specific stuff, right? So for example, this is a usual GCP cloud SQL instance CRD. Here you see like you know we have inline 
XPV1 resource spec that comes from cross-plane runtime, and it has the standard uh, fields. So under four provider, then you start to give like, you know, hey, Cloud SQL instance requires these parameters to work with. So that's like, you know, this, this is a like scaffold file which we will create with a command and then populate inside this parameters and observation structs. Because like, you know, they are the ones that are like, you know, API specific and the rest is like, you know, cross-plane generic. So as an example, the resource spec struct from cross-plane runtime contains this right connection secret ref, provider config ref, and deletion policy. So you can be sure that like, you know, at every cross-plane provider and CRD, you can find these fields and build your assumptions on top of them. And then the controller. I think this is one of the key parts. So when you develop a cross-plane provider, you yourself don't actually write the whole controller logic. And what I mean by controller logic, uh, if, if you have developed Kubernetes controllers before, this function signature should be like, you know, really familiar to you because it's what upstream controller runtime requires, right? So in cross-plane runtime, we actually develop that signature for you and then ask only the CRUD methods of the API. So you don't have to think about like, you know, okay, is this function item potent? Is this function like, you know, uh, if, if at the same two controllers reconcile at the same time, will create be called two times, for example. How does the like, you know, calls uh, are made for like, you know, deletion, for example. So all these like, you know, basic logic that you have to write for every API are handled in this controller. So for example, if you can see here, like we uh, get the resource like new managed and I will go into like, you know, I will show you the interface there. So it works with like, you know, interface and like, you know, I'll, I'll show how it's generated. And then here, the logic starts, right? For example, it's, uh, if, if the resource is deleted and if, if it's orphan, like, you know, don't touch it. If it's not orphan, like, you know, do that and do this. Like, you know, the whole logic is implemented here. So in order for this controller to work, that is like, you know, what you need to provide as uh, functions of the CRUD functions in your actual implementation. Because like, you know, that is the point that we cannot generalize across all APIs, right? We cannot know, like, you know, observe implementation of cloud SQL instance uh, while we write, we write this, like, you know, in cross plane runtime. So that's where you come in and, like, you know, add these functions, which we will do for two resources in a minute. Like, observe, create, update, and delete. And then uh, this is the, you remember, there was a new managed call. And this is, like, you know, the, another interface that has to be satisfied by your CRD. And that is like, you know, how we impose these standards at a technical level. So like, you know, it's not only a convention. Whenever we can, we impose those like, you know, as technical limitations. For example, it has to have like provider config reference interface. It has to implement that. It has to implement conditioned interface, which is like, you know, ready condition, sync condition. And it has to like, you know, have connection secret writer to interface implemented. And for all these, because they are like generic across all resources, we have code generation tools that will help you just to like, you know, scaffold, make your changes, run, make, generate, and all is filled and like, you know, ready to be used. And this is an example of generated code by our angry jet tool. So as you can see, cloud SQL instance, get condition, get deletion policy, these are all uh, and like your code is analyzed statically, and then like you know, if it sees resource spec in line, it generates all of these automatically, so that you don't have to think about okay, like you know, now what do I need to like you know, implement extra to 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 satisfy this interface? Because we want to keep as little as possible uh, to for implementation, so that you can focus on your API bindings, like the CRUD methods that I showed earlier. And the next one is the referencing that I mentioned in the XRM. And this is like, you know, one of the key differences between like, you know, other infrastructure as code tools is that it works just like Kubernetes references, right? In Kubernetes, you refer to like, you know, specific, like with label selector, you refer to services, from services to pods, for example. And that is like, you know, how we do the same thing with infrastructure. For example, you can refer from RDS instance to tree subnets and VPCs and security groups, 
all in the similar way with Kubernetes. And that is like, you know, how we technically implement this. You add reference and selector, and these are like same as Kubernetes structs. And then we annotate this field so that it generates the actual reference resolving function. For example, in other tools, you, you, whenever you need to uh, reference another object, you have to give the field path, like, hey, go and take this information from spec for provider VPC ID and that, and then maybe uh, normalize it with, like, you know, concatenate it and do that. All this is built in in the, in the, in the provider code, so you only need to give always, like, you know, the custom resource name and the eventual consistency and like, you know, with one kubectl apply, you can bring up the whole world of cloud resources. Yeah, and this is the actual, like, you know, generated code for reference resolver, and this is also like, you know, what we will say in a minute. I'm just like, you know, keep it, uh, giving you like a little peeks of the code that we will be working with. Uh, you see uh, like resolve references, and then we use the fields and report like, you know, if it's not resolved, so yeah, it's it's, uh, it's all generated code. Um, and yeah, now uh, we will start the implementation. Uh, Hassan will be uh, helping here. So Planet Scale Provider, we will implement a database CRD, and it requires password. Password API is a different API, so we have to implement a different CRD for that. And then we will have we will write a composition, cross-plane composition that has one database, one password, and one WordPress installation with Helm. So with composition, we will have a new API. We will define it via YAML, XRD, and we will go into details after the implementation. And then like, you know, with one namespace YAML, you will have both, you will have all these three like, you know, provisioned immediately. And yeah, so I will uh, let Hassan take over and start the implementation. Thank you. Um, yeah, so maybe I should quickly uh, talk about why we choose Plan Scale uh, in our uh, implementation. So Plan Scale is a, a managed service with cool features, and it's based on or works on top of open source Vitesse project. And uh, the the first point is it does not have a cross plane provider yet, so we will implement it here together from scratch. Uh, another thing is like uh, it allows you to have one database for a free account so that you can just, uh, you know, like try that out by creating an account and getting an access token. So uh, this is why we choose Planet Scale. Um, yeah, so let me start. So uh, first of all, uh, we will start I don't know, like, uh, I, I, I believe there will be someone who will try following the uh, implementation, so I will try to be as slow as possible. So first of all, we will need to go to crossplane slash provider template. So this is a uh, template, GitHub template, uh, and it has all the you know, like uh, scaffolds or all the uh, functionalities, including uh, CI, including build, uh, make files, etc. So we can just make a quick start from here, uh, and then uh, it will be easier to uh, build our provider. So first thing is uh, we'll need to hit this, uh, use this template button and then select an organization. Uh, I will start this under cross-plane contrib, but you can select it, select your own uh, GitHub org. Planet scale, provider plan scale. So now I'm hitting create repository. All right. So now I'm cloning it to my demo directory. Is text size is good for everyone? Okay. Um, so CD 
provider planet scale and let me open my goland so scale So right now, everything, uh, like, we only have template inside the uh, repository. You can see, like, in the readme, we have provider template. In image names, we have template, template controller. Uh, we have a sample API, uh, and we only have a sample controller. Like, in this state, you can already build and run this controller, and it will have a sample API. You can play with it. But uh, now we will not do that. We will immediately start building our own provider. So first step is, uh, as you would expect, to replace the name template with planet scale so that uh, we, can, uh, you know, like we can have the correct name of our provider. So we have recently added uh, a helper utility, helper make target, I would say. Um, so let me. Open my notes. Yeah, so first of all, after uh, you know cloning, we need to run make submodules so that we get build submodule, uh, which is a common submodule that is you know under a bound uh, organization, but it uh, contains uh, like really useful utilities for building and pushing images and helm charts, etc. So we have uh, we got it, and the make target that I mentioned is uh, make provider dot prepare, and then we gave the provider name, and it will be planet scale. Yeah. So let's check what happened. Yeah, as you can see, all the name uh, template names replaced with planet scale uh, and we got rid of the sample API. Uh, we don't have any API yet in this controller. So now uh, let's use the other uh, you know helper uh, make target and to generate uh, and generate the uh, database type. So uh, for any type uh, you would need to define a group and a kind in, in Kubernetes, and also a uh, API version. So uh, I will not give API version, and it will default to v1 alpha 1, but uh, I will need to find a group and uh, a, you know, a kind. So typically for AWS services, for example, you can have EC2 as group name, uh, and then instance as kind, uh, but in the case of planet scale, like we have database, and we could, of course, say it's database and kind as instance, but I choose to use uh, database group and database as the name of the kind. So, so now I'm running this command provider add type, provider name, group database, and kind database. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, here at this time, I don't know if I can make this bigger. Uh, does anybody know that? Experience. I can try this one. Window. Okay. Sen biliyor musun nasıl çıkıyorum buradan şimdi? Mesajı mı? Yok şuradan tekrar şey yapacağım. Okay, anyway, it doesn't work well. Uh, so tools, and the windows. Okay, anyway, so uh, here you can see like database API is created with just some placeholder, uh, but this part is just common. Uh, we don't have to do anything specific to our resource at this section. But here you can see like spec has a database spec and database, the database spec contains the 
uh, cross-plane runtime resource spec, which already has the built-in or common XRM uh, methods or fun functions or types. So here you can see write connection secret, publish connection details, provider config reference, deletion policy. We don't have to do anything uh, for, for those. So they, they just come uh, for free. Uh, we only need to change this database parameters section. And here you can see a, like it is a placeholder configurable field and uh, we will change this in a minute. So, but, but before that, let's also generate the other type, which is a branch password. Uh, in in plan scale, after, after you create a database, to use that database, you will need to create a password. This is a different step, like in UI, you can uh, click and get the password, but behind the scenes, it, it makes another API call, and uh, for the branch that you selected, you can uh, create a password. So uh, this, this time we use group name as branch and kind will be password. So yeah, this, this uh, password type is also added. There is two steps that is not uh, automated yet with this uh, make targets, uh, but they are relatively simple. So uh, first of all, we need to register our APIs in this API slash, slash plan scale.go file, and then we also need to uh, register our controllers. So let's go there. Yeah, here you can see we got rid of actually the sample uh, and uh, we now have database, and this should be database v1 alpha 1, database v1 alpha 1, and then we also have a branch group. Branch, so. Okay, so we have registered our APIs under APIs directory. Now the next thing is uh, to register our controllers. So you can see we have database type and password type, and we no longer have my type, so let's change it. Database, database.setup, and password and password.setup. Okay, so we have uh, types generated, controllers generated as placeholders or as scaffold and re registered those uh, APIs and controllers. Now, uh, if we check here, like uh, in schema builder register, it fails like uh, gives an error, like some methods are missing, deep copy object, etc. So uh, at this point, we use code generation tools. Uh, controller runtime uh, controller tools uh, will generate these deep copy methods, like the, the methods common to uh, any Kubernetes object, like just like you are building a, a normal cross-plane Kubernetes operator. But um, the cross-plane tools will also do the same and uh, generate the required methods for cross-plane XRM. So let's call make.generate. Okay, so let's see what we had generated. <clears throat> yeah, so you can see like generated that deep copy. This is generated by uh, controller tools. And we also have generated that managed, managed resource, managed is a concept in uh, Kubernetes, in Crossplane. We call external resource representations as managed resources. So here we see like the generated methods uh, for uh, to, to satisfy cross-plane XRM. So I think we are in a good state, so uh, it's good to commit these changes, not to lose 
Uh, so I will just add everything and generate types, uh, generate and register types. So now we have our controller with types, uh, but there is no uh, business logic in it. So let's, let's do that right now. So first of all, uh, since this is, uh, you know, like uh, the controllers are implemented in Go Golang, we will need to find a Go client for the API that we will be interacting with. So I will search for planet scale uh, Go client. So let's see what we have in database. Yeah, so here you can see create database request and it has these fields. So in our spec, we will also need the same fields. So I will just uh, copy them here and go to API, database, database type and parameters four parameters and database parameters. So I will just put them here and uh, do some minor modifications. First of all, I will need to, you know, add a JSON tag for this as well. And it is organization. Uh, we don't need name because we will use the metadata.name of our custom resource. So I'm. Yeah, or external name. Yeah, external name. Uh, and I'm getting rid of this. And one thing, uh, like one important point here, like uh, nodes and region has omit empty tag, which indicates that these are optional fields. Uh, you can verify this by, you know, like creating a database from UI and you see that those are optional. So since they are optional, we will need to change their type from uh, string to pointer to string type. So uh, when it is string pointer, we can, uh, you know, like check whether it is nil or not. If it is nil, we, we just uh, do not pass anything. So for optional types in crossplane, we, uh, you know, set this. So let's also add the cube builder tag, optional. Optional, yeah. So I think we are good to continue. So in the observation section, uh, this will be the output of the uh, or add status part. So let's see what we have. We can always add, you know, like more along the way. But let's say we have a created add field uh, and a state that would be interesting. Uh, at the end of the day, we will add all of them, but let's start with just having state here. So state and have it as string for the sake of simplicity uh, and states. Okay, so we, conf we, we uh, added our parameters and observation fields, and now we can continue with the controller part. So. Here is the controller. This is uh, just, this just has uh, the, you know, uh, CRUD methods that Moafak showed uh, with a, you know, like a good level of initial initialization code. So we will implement observe, create, update, and delete. And for that, first of all, we will need to implement the connect method. In the connect method, we, we need to initialize a client of the external service, which is a planet scale service. And for that, of course, we need to extract some credentials or find some credentials from somewhere. So in crossplane, this is done by uh, reading the provider config. And usually, or typically, these provider configs refer to a Kubernetes secret. And that secret contains the actual uh, API credential. So um, these placeholder codes will extract the uh, you know secret that we need and then pass to new service function. And new service function 
gets a credentials as a credential as input and then returns an interface. So we will need to define this interface. Like uh, we no longer need to use knob service, so I will replace it as uh, planet scale. Okay, so we will initialize the planet scale service, and uh, before that, let me just go and get planet scale go client so that um, GoLand could help me to, you know, autocomplete. So I get, uh, I got the plan scale go client. So now, in this plan scale client, plan scale service, we will have a PCLI, and this PCLI should be type of planet scale dot client, and. Uh, we will need to initialize this client somehow, creds, uh, and return it. So let's. So th there are two ways uh, in plan scale service to authenticate to API. One is service account tokens. The other is access token. Uh, somehow I couldn't make it with uh, make it work with uh, service account tokens, uh, but. Uh, it works with access tokens, so I already have my access token uh, configured. Uh, if anyone interested, I can show you how you can get it because it's not straightforward. You cannot just get it from the UI. Uh, I had to initialize client and read from uh, a local directory. So, but the point is, uh, now we, we assume that this creds is access token, and uh, let's initialize uh, our client planet scale dot new client and planet scale dot with access token and access token is actually coming as creds so string and this also returns an error and if error is not Oh, I think I don't even need that. PCLI, C, and error. Okay, now new planet scale service function returns a client, initializes and returns the client for us. Okay, so this should be pointer to planet scale service. And uh, this signature has changed, so we also need to change this signature. Okay, I think we are good to go. So, we have our client initialized, and now we will need to implement those crude methods. Uh, and uh, here, we of course need to pass uh, service as planet scale service, and let's go and implement our observe method. Okay, we can also start with create to make it uh, more exciting. So uh, let's implement the create. So what we have, we have that external and service and it has our planet scale client. Now I can call uh, databases create, we have context, and it requires a planet scale database, database create request, or create database request. Yeah. So fill all fields, and this requires a pointer. Okay, now uh, we need an organization, and uh, in the UI, uh, I have my organization as Turkan H, Turkan H. So uh, let's use that. Oh, actually, we will uh, just get what we have from uh, spec. So cr dot spec dot for provider dot 
organization. So we get our uh, organization, and for metadata, uh, for, for name, actually we will use uh, the external name. So metadata gets external name of custom resource, and these are optional fields. So let's check if they are really set. Spec that uh, for provider that notes if it is not nil. Let's say notes empty notes equals okay. Do the same for region. Okay, so this returns a DB and an error. And now we can check the state of the DB. Um, CR dot status dot. It providers DB dot state and. No, not set conditions. Status. Tamam, ben et provider state equals db dot state, and let's convert it to a string because it has it is an enum. Okay, so now we don't get any connection details here. I can show it, so you can see like what are returned from the API. Notes, region, state, HTML URL name created at and updated at. So, uh, as we said in the beginning, we will need to implement another uh, resource for that. Okay, now I think we are good to give it a try, uh, just to make it a bit more exciting. Uh, so, what I will do is I will run make generate once. What is that? This happens. Okay, so uh, I have a brand new uh, kind cluster. So, first of all, I will apply the uh, CRDs that were already generated for me. You can see password, database, provider config, and others. And uh, now I can run my controller with make run. So while it is running, Okay, so let's uh, find an example here and just, I think I can just rename it. Factor rename database and refactor rename database. And I have database as group, planet scale, and then database. And for provider, I have organization here. here. And it is my organization. And let's also add a note. Hello from Crossplane. And I will also need to create a provider config. Let's make it default. So an example provider config. I have my token secret, so I'm deleting this one. And let's use it. Okay, so uh, kubectl apply f. Mm -hmm. 
P scale token secret. And I will create my provider config. All right, so now I can create our database. So let's have a final look if everything is looking good. So it will be named as example and it will be under Turk Turkan H organization and it will have this uh, node. So kubectl create examples, database, database.yaml, kubectl, get database, let's watch it. Okay, so it says it is synced, uh, but since we didn't set any ready condition yet, uh, it didn't report ready. We usually set this in observe method, so we observe and verify that it really exists and its state is ready. After that, we set it as ready. So let's see what we have in here. We don't have anything. <laughs> so let's see. External resources up to date. Observe the foster missile has existed. Observe resource exists, but the foster missile has. Okay, so we should implement observe as well, yeah. So we couldn't make it fast. Anyway, so I will stop and uh, create method is not called because in observe we should observe and make sure that it is not existing. So we will also need to implement observe method. Uh, so let's do it quickly. So c dot service dot pcli databases get ctx planet scale dot get database request fill all fields organization cr dot spec dot for provider organization and meta dot get external name cr and okay so db error and now we need to check like we get the, we try to get the database and now we need to check whether it's really it, it is an not found error or something else so we do that like that and error planet scale error and if it is planet scale error and its code is a not found, then, so these uh, group methods expect this, uh, you know, like managed external observation uh, result and uh, return managed external observation and if it does not exist, we should just say resource exists as false. And if it exists, uh, mail. and if it exists, then we will need to, uh, you know, if db dot state equals planet scale dot database ready, then CR dot status dot set condition XP V1 dot available. Okay, so uh, in the database spec, there is no field to, to be updated in, in plan scale database API. So if it exists, we just return as exist and uh, that's it. So now we can just run it again. We didn't make any API changes, so we don't need to uh, regenerate anything. Uh, 
Okay, what's this? Error is not planet scale error. Ah. Okay. This one. Okay, now it says true. Let's check. Yeah, as you can see, our database is created and our node is uh, available here uh, and um, we are almost done with the database resource. One, one last method that we will need to implement is delete method, but uh, at this point if there are any questions uh, we can try to respond. Any questions up to this point? Okay, so um, we have our database ready and also the last method that we will need to implement is just delete and cr dot, not cr, c dot service dot cli databases delete context and planet scale delete database requests fill all fields cr dot spec dot for provider organization and for the database name, meta.getExternal name, and we have CR here. This only returns an error, so we can just return its result back in the delete. All right, so let's run it again and also verify the delete as well. How can I do that? Okay, here you can see the database is gone and uh, we have completed the implementation of the database. So it adds commits implement database. Okay, now the next resource that we need to implement is password. I will try to be as fast as possible because most of the parts will be just duplicate. So I'm just copying uh, this part here. Ideally, we should not repeat ourselves, but just to be fast, I'm copying here. So, and new service function. Service. So, we don't have to do anything here. Scale service. Okay, in observe, we get c dot service dot pcli passwords. Get ctx planet scale. Get password or password. This branch password requests. And here, oh, we need to fill the API first, so we cannot be that fast. So we need to check the passwords here, and we again have uh, organization database branch display name. So. I will just get them from database and password. Yes, organization create 
that is the create. Organization database branch. Also have a display name. We can use display name as metadata name, so I'm deleting this one as well. And password ID. Okay, so let's get back to implementation. Password, spec for provider organization, and cr.spec.forprovider.database and cr.spec.forprovider.branch, uh, cr.name. Meta that get external name CR and P error and return error here. So let's also have create implemented c.service.pcli password create context planet scale database branch password request fill all fields cr.spec.provider organization cr.spec.provider database and cr.spec.forprovider branch and this is an optional field we can implement it later and meta dot uh, name display name is just meta uh, cr dot name okay so this is create p the p error and error and now uh, cr dot status dot at provider dot id password and public id. Okay, so this is create. We don't have any update, and finally we will need to have the delete method uh, service that CLI password delete TX and it's scale dot password not this one Okay. So these three, I don't believe.
Okay, so password should also be available now. Uh, and let's also create an example for it. Password. Um, vector password. Okay, so it is under branch group. Its name is password. And it has a database. OK, so uh, our password implementation is also ready. So let's uh, try it now. Uh, yeah, before that, we also need to publish the connection details. So um, in create, yeah, so hosts, we need to find this somewhere. And I'm just starting. And uh, username, password. and database. So for host, I remember it was somewhere. Yeah, this one. And this should be a byte array. So let's convert it. And P dot P dot public ID right. P dot plain text and finally P dot do we have it here? No CR dot spec dot for providers database. All right, so this should be good to go. Uh, since we have API changes in password, I, I will need to regenerate and reapply the new types. kubectl apply f package crds. OK, so make run. Uh, which one? Password. OK. Now we don't have any managed resources, so let's create the database again so that we can create a password for it and password fingers crossed did we have a right connection secret to ref field i guess not in the example okay so we also need to set to see the connection So I'm deleting this one.
Okay, so our database is ready. I will create the password now before I would like to check if we are in a clean state because we stopped in the middle. So, yeah, that one. Let me clean this. Okay, now I will create the password again. Uh, right connection secret to ref. Okay, kubectl get password. Yeah, we have our uh, password is also created. We didn't set the uh, available, so it's not reporting ready, but we will fix it. So, but before that, let's see if our connection secret also available. Get secrets. Yeah, here you can see the DB con. And if we check its content, yeah, we have all the fields uh, filled. So let's see what we have as host, just as an example. Yeah, this is our host generated by planet scale uh, for us. So let's do the final touches and then we will uh, continue with using it from the application. So the final touch number one is, uh, that's number two. Number one is, yeah, to mark it as, a, as ready after observing. We observed it is available and now we can uh, CR.status.set conditions XPV1 available. Yeah, this is first one. The next one is, uh, as you might have noticed, we have uh, the database here. And uh, actually, database is another managed resource. And instead of giving its name uh, hard as hard-coded, we can also uh, create references. And this is especially important in the case of composition, because you would like to, usually you would like to uh, combine uh, resources in the same composition with each other so that you can refer, for example, uh, to the database uh, in the same composition. So we will also need to uh, implement references. Uh, actually, this is uh, just auto-generation. So let's continue, let's do that. Password, and uh, we will have database, ref, in fact, do you remember the exact type? Reference, okay, and JSON uh, database ref and oh, it's empty, and we also have a selector database selector, oh, it's empty selector, and now. We will need to uh, say that we will refer to that uh, previous resource we have. So let me check quickly. Cross plane tools. It says that how to define resolvers. Okay, so we will no need to show the reference type uh, dot com slash cross plane contrib slash provider planet scale then APIs right Mafak mm -hmm. and database is this enough or should I go down? Not the database. Not the database. Dot database. This one. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Yes. Take a look at the example. We uh, mm. want alpha one. Okay. Not this one. Slash. We want one. One. Database. 
Okay. So, one thing. What is our goal module name? It is this one. So, I would need to use that instead. Instead of repo. Okay. So, let's run make generate. Okay, so what did happen is uh, this new method uh, is generated, this, this new file generated, and here you can see like uh, the resolve references function resolves the reference from password to uh, database. So this is also good. Uh, and kubectl get managed. I think. One last try and ah, okay. Since CRD has changed, I need to apply this again and make run. And after seeing it as true, true. Why is that? Yeah. Bunda sıkıntı yok, şunda sıkıntı var. Composition da bu debug ederiz diyorsun. <gülüyor> Managed. So what's wrong here? I'm guessing we hit some intermediary state during development, so uh, let's uh. Ne yapıyorduk hocam? Şöyle yapmıyorduk. Türkçe'ye dönmüş bir dakika. I'll get managed. Okay, I think we are good to go, except this one. We said that, right? Controller password observe here. Ah, okay, we need to set the external name here. 
C-R.Z External Name Meta.Z External Name C-R Then P.Public ID Okay, this was missing. Yine mi öyle olacak? Şimdi diyecek ki o isim ne var? Okay. So let's see how it goes. Let's also clean this. Okay. So, uh, I think something messed up during the development, but uh, we hope that like with composition, with clean installation, it will work. Yeah, so uh, now we will use this, now we will use these resources in a composition and consume them from WordPress, so that WordPress works with Planet Scale, uses it as database. Um, <coughs> maybe a bit, uh, Sabri about yeah, maybe a bit about the composition. So here is the composition that we are going to use. So the main point of composition is that you don't have to like you know you don't have to create database password and everything else uh, every time. So you expose an API that that is like you know, specific to your use case. And then, like you know, let crossplay create those for you by uh, with the configuration you give. So, for example, in this case, we are defining a new API with composite resource definition type from core crossplay, and it has only one parameters parameter blog name, right? And then we are saying that, like you know, for every instance of that API, go ahead and create one planet scale database one password and one hand release that installs the, the, the WordPress to the existing cluster, in cluster, the kind cluster that right now we are using. And there are like, you know, some details, like the one example is here. So we say that like, you know, the customer, the, the user gives like, you know, this small claim, let me show you. They only create this one, and we take spec dot blog name here in composition to say, okay, like you know, use this as the as the blog name here by adding a patch. So we don't write a controller for like you know aggregating all these resources, but we only instruct it via YAML. So without writing code, you can compose everything like that. And similarly, for example. Uh, we can build like you know similar APIs for clusters, for example. You can have like you know in one composition, just like database and password, you can have VPC, three subnet, security group, internet gateway. And if you go to crossband.io, you can see an example like more complex examples like this. So right now, what we are going to do is first to uh, create our abstraction API, which will be like kubecon WordPress type. Um, okay, so kubectl um, composition, kubectl apply, apply f, xrd. So once I create this, there will be two CRDs created by Crossplane as a result. You should need to install Crossplane. Oh, Crossplane is not installed, so. Helm upgrade the install and give you. Um, upgrade, install. Yeah. Yeah, for, uh, for XRDs and compositions, you need Crossplane itself. 
So far, we haven't needed it because of like, you know, with local development, we don't need to package the whole provider. We just run, make run, and, and we run it locally. So, um, yeah, so now Cuba Crossplane is installed. STL, get ports, dash n. Okay, so now I'm going to say kubectl apply, define my CRD, uh, XRD, and then I will apply my composition, which you can see one database, one password, and then Helm release. And by default, it uses the same cluster in cluster. And for that, I need to install Helm provider. So I am going to use crossplane CLI to install Helm provider in a minute. Okay. Because like, you know, all the providers used in one composition should be ready and installed before uh, you create your claim. So now I'm going to create my composition. So now I have the API definition and I told Crossplane to what, what, what I need to happen when an instance of that API is created a CR custom resource is created. So now I will first check whether all providers are in place in Crossplane system. Yeah, provider helm is up now, and I locally run the, um, the plan scale provider. So what I will do is to first create the provider configs Planscape provider config is already there, so what I will do is to create provider config of hand provider. Because I am going to use the service account of hand provider to deploy to the same cluster, I need to give it uh, more permissions. By default, it doesn't have the permissions to deploy to your own cluster. You would need to give a kube config to target a, another cluster. So I'm just like now with a small quicks, I will give permission with cluster role binding. Cool, so now I can create the provider config for Helm saying like, you know, hey, use this uh, same cluster. F, uh, Helm provider. CTL get managed, can you check yeah. it right? So, get managed, just to make sure that there is nothing in the cluster. So, um, and because right now we run the provider, uh, the pl provider plan scale, scale locally, it, the cross plane itself does not have the permissions to deploy its CRDs. So we will need to give that permission to cross plane itself. Normally, you would install it just like provider helm and get the permissions. So what I'm going to do is to do the same thing with Cross plane cluster role as well, just for the sake of demo. Service account. Yeah, okay. Cool, so now Crossplane has the permissions. As I said, like, you know, when, when it's installed through the package manager, you don't need to do that. So I'm going to create this claim with, like, you know, Crossplane in KubeCon blog name. So kubectl apply claim to my namespace, which is default. So now I'm going to like, you know, uh, see it started to, what? kubectl, managed. 
See, all these three objects are created by crossplane with the uh, with the configuration that you gave with composition. So I did not have to go like and create each one of them. Uh, so, Mofak, I think we have five minutes left. So maybe we can leave that to the questions until it's uh, yeah. getting ready. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we, we need to wrap up. So let me get back to the slides while it's getting ready. Um, so yeah, this is like you know how you uh, de develop a provider. We had to like you know develop two managed resources so that like you know it, we can have a connection secret with the host and password details and mount it to Pro uh, WordPress, which is also done in that composition. So like you know, uh, composition allows you to like you know make all sorts of like you know relations between resources from different providers. So right now, for example, my cluster has a KubeCon WordPress API available for my developers. So whenever they need, they can just create that CR and like, you know, get database password and WordPress. Um, so yeah, uh, you can go to Crosspen.io for more compositions and like you know go multi cloud or multi tier cloud or like you know use planet scale azure aws together everything like you know co composition is not opinionated on like you know which providers you need to use but it, it, it is opinionated that it needs to be a cross band provider um, and packages uh, there are a lot more details about the packages so you can package providers and also the configurations which is like you know xrd and composition together so you can publish them just like you know Terraform modules and registry. And lastly, TerraJet. TerraJet is one of the latest uh, code generation framework we have. And it generates all, the, all what we did uh, just a minute ago, like you know, using its own generic controller to call Terraform providers under the hood. So you don't have to write the cloud vendor specific stuff. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, we're ready to answer. And it's, I think, WordPress might be ready now. OK, yeah, it's, it's probably something small messed up, so. Um. Yeah, we will, uh, like, shortly after this demo, we will commit that provider uh, planet scale to cross-plane contip organization. So you can check the code there, uh, like this. Uh, the code that we have implemented live here will be available for you. Uh, and we will also share the composition that we are showing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are like, you know, other compositions, like for example, right now we use the existing cluster, but you can have, for example, GK cluster from provider GCP and connect it to like, you know, Helm release object. So like, you know, once you create WordPress on KubeCon, it will create a cluster, it would, install, uh, it would create database password and then install Helm uh, release of WordPress and then connect everything and you will get a URL saying like, you know, WordPress is ready to, act, uh, to be accessed. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that is uh, by default on, and I, actually you can't really turn it off. So like you know, it checks like you know uh, for every event, it checks the custom resource and runs the whole reconciliation logic. And if there is no event, there is no change in your Kubernetes cluster. For every minute, it checks. It still runs the reconciliation. We checks the external API. For example, if I went to Planet Scale and changed the description, like nodes field then it will see that and it will correct that. So source of the truth is the custom resource and it continues to reconcile. For example, in AWS, if you change a parameter, it will like, you know, fix that as well. So it continuously fixes, just like deployment and pod. Deployment here is the database custom resource and pod here is the resource in the cloud. So for example, if you delete pod, deployment will recreate it immediately. And the same thing with Cross plane providers. If you like, you know, delete the database right now, it will create a new one with the same name. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that is that is one part that we kind of skipped. So you see, there is a function. Uh, there is a field here, resource up to date. 
So what you do here, like, you know, in the logic, you have the P available here, right? And CR available. So you say, like, you know, hey, if P, like, let's say something like this, P dot, like, uh, I don't know, name is not equal to CR dot get name, let's say. Like, you know, notes and notes like that in both sides. So you report that, and then Reconciler sees it, and it calls the update method so that it fixes the, 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 the changes. Yeah, and actually, that is, goes like you know, both ways. Fix the uh, corrections, and then also for every event in the CR, it, it calls the update if it's necessary. Yeah, actually, the, the uh, two resources that we have implemented today are a bit special in a way that like, they don't have updatable fields. So you cannot update anything on the password resource. And also for the database, uh, there is no updatable parameters. But for example, if it was an AWS RDS database, there was a storage size. And uh, in the desired state, you specify the storage size. And then if you go to AWS console and change it to something else, uh, Crossplane controller will go and actively reconcile it back to the desired state. Yeah, please. Uh, I can repeat the question. Yeah. yeah. Here's my question. So thank you for a nice talk. Uh, really impressive uh, work. Could you maybe uh, also touch a bit on the subject of importing already existing resources yeah. and uh, how the create method gets a little bit more complicated in, in, in that sense? Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you noticed, there is this external name notion here, right? Like we don't actually use the custom resource name because like there are certain names that Kubernetes does not allow you to name the custom resource and you may not know it beforehand, right? So we use the external name annotation to get and like you know if provider allows, we also use that like you know for example for database you are able to give its name, right, in the create. So we use get external name. So if you create the custom resource with an existing external name annotation What's going to happen is that first observe is run for every reconcile, and it will not report that resource does not exist, right? Because create is called only if you return false here. So if it's going to like you know run the get call and just continue as if it was the one who created it. So crossplane does not care whether it created the resource or not. So it's just like you know if there's an external name, it hits the API, says like you know hey does that exist? And if it exists it starts to reconcile it just like as if it was the one who created it. Okay. Is it okay that I ask another question? Sure. Yeah. Um, so you specified a password on, uh, for this database, right? Let's say that I compromised my password somehow. Is there a way to uh, like do key rollovers with this? Like so I could roll over my password and then my app could like get it automatically? Do you have like a way of changing like Terraform? Yeah, so, so, so in this specific example, Planet Scale does not allow you to give a password in plain text, right? So it's only like, you know, we request a password, it returns, and we save it to the connection secret. So in this implementation, for example, it's only published in create, right? But in a, in a, you know, like, you know, in an implementation that we would merge upstream, it would also, like, you know, publish it here in observe as well, right? If, if the Planet Scale, plan scale returns it. But a lot of times, they either allow it to, like, you know, to send over create or return as the result of create and not return it via get because it's like available for one time. But like, you know, for the reason, for example, EKS cluster is a great example. It refreshes its token for every 15 minutes. So at every observe, we actually fetch the EKS cluster and then publish it so that like, you know, new token is published and then you get it updated and your application gets like, you know, refresh token and keep working. So like it depends on the API, like you know, if the API allows it, uh, we do that. But one main difference with Terraform there, for example, in this case, password change would require deletion of the password, right? We don't delete it, like you know, just to get the refresh token, you have to keep CTL deleted. In Terraform, like you know, if you, I don't know, like change it, it would delete and recreate it. There is no logic, such logic in Crossplane. Like, it always has to, like, you need to delete the resource, and new one could be created, which is, like, you know, a great use case for composition. 
like you know it's all deployed everywhere okay i want to refresh the password you go and delete the managed resource password and composition will create a new one automatically because that's how you configured it like you know in in your composition yaml so like to summarize tainting would be deleting my resource and then getting a new one in this specific yes. case yes cool thank you yeah, you're welcome uh any other yeah the last one yeah i think we're a little bit over time hi sorry i had two questions but maybe we'll see how much time we have um if i'm making my own custom resource do I need to observe for every possible configuration out there? So for example, if I'm getting a database, right, I might just observe like name, size, whatever. But what if there's a configuration, configuration change down the line that I didn't monitor for, then that, that changes. Is Crossman able to detect as a change or only on things I'm trying to uh, monitor? So if I understand, you're asking like, you know, do I have to like, you know, the comparison logic that I mentioned, do I have to do that for every field? Right, so. Uh, actually, yes. Like, okay. you know, for example, RDS is this has like, you know, 75 fields, yep. let's say. So like, you know, what, what I do is like, you know, look at the update API to see what's, what can be updated. And you check like, you know, every field there, like, you know, with if conditions and stuff. Uh, <laughs> and like, you know, report back, hey, there's a, uh, we need to update the resource. And then update starts. So there, like, you know, every, every updatable field needs to be checked one by one. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Yep. And the second part is, what happens when this cluster goes down? What happens when this cluster goes down? Yeah. Yeah, so it, this is like a control plane, it's not a data plane, so like, you know, if, this, if I do kind delete, database will still be there, password will still be there. Because like, you know, unless you kubectl delete it, and provider sees and calls the delete implementation, we, we don't touch it. So it's not like a data plane that will like, you know, stop the, the data flow. It's like a control plane that is just like, you know, provisions and deletes and like, you know, make sure everything is, is correct. Yeah, actually one thing that we, uh, you know, like for the sake of simplicity in the demo, we use that control plane to deploy our application as well. So this is not the typical use case of cross plane. So in cross plane, you don't have the application workloads on the control plane. Uh, so as Mafak said, if control plane goes down, you only lose active reconciliation. Okay. If you recover it back, it will just automatically get reconciling again. But in the in the meantime, your resources are just running there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually, like you know, you have one control plane like special to cross plane and not run WordPress on it, for example. Mm -hmm. And like you know, you would have an existing cluster, let's say, and in your composition, for example, you can point to that or. In your claim API, you can say, OK, give me a cluster name that is already available in the cluster so that I can use that. So like, you know, I mean, there are like, you know, different deployment architectures. Like, you know, one is like this one. And but like, you know, the more like, you know, we see more and more people using like, you know, one control plane specific to cross plane and manage like, you know, all their uh, deployments and infrastructure through that with composition. OK, thank you. Right, cool. Uh, I think that's it. You can find uh, me and Hassan at either Crossplane booth or Upbound booth. Uh, thank you for listening.